Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Wolfman Mozzie, and welcome to a series that I'm calling Mozzie's Kitchen. It's something very different from my normal gaming content, so if you do enjoy it, I do encourage you to, to click the thumbs up, perhaps leave a comment down below, maybe suggest something that you would like to see me make. But this is a series where I take you into the kitchen with me, and I make a meal based off of either something nerdy or gaming related. And today, it's going to be a Dungeons & Dragons themed meal which I'm using recipes from the Dungeons & Dragons cookbook called Heroes Feast, where you can get online or anywhere else you buy cookbooks. This meal, I'm going to try and make the braised beef, the Otix skillet fried spiced potatoes, and the castle amber onion soup. Without any delay, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're gonna go ahead and start with our beef. We're gonna take a large Dutch oven, go ahead and heat it up to a medium to high heat, add a tablespoon of oil until it's simmering, and then we're going to go ahead and put our beef chuck roast in the Dutch oven and brown it on both sides. Now go ahead and remove the beef and place it into a separate bowl. And if you need to add a tablespoon of oil to the Dutch oven, then add your diced onions. You wanna cook those for about four minutes or so until they soften up and release their liquids. You wanna lower the heat to about a medium low setting and cook the onions for an additional 15 minutes. Next, go ahead and add the thyme, ginger, and flour. And continuously stir those onions until they become fully coated and sticky and golden in color. Once that's done, you'll go ahead and add the cider. They say you can use any cider, but they do recommend using a pear cider if you can find it. So that's what we have here. And they also said to add one can. This is a little larger can than normal. So I just decided to use all of it anyway. With the cider, you wanna also add the broth and about a half teaspoon of salt. And then keep stirring and again, scraping the bottom so none of the onions get stuck to the bottom of the Dutch oven. They do say to use a low sodium broth, but if you use just a standard broth, then I find you don't have to add this half teaspoon of salt. There's enough sodium in just the broth. While this is going on, go ahead and start up the oven and preheat it to 300 Fahrenheit and make sure that rack is on the middle section. Once that's ready, go ahead and take your beef and nestle it nicely in the sparkling broth goodness. And then put a cover on the Dutch oven, place it in the oven for about an hour and 35 minutes. At that point, you wanna go ahead and take the beef out and add the sliced pears and then cover it and place it back in the oven for two hours. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the castle amber onion soup. The first step is going to be heating up a large Dutch oven to a medium high heat, melting three tablespoons of butter. While this is going on, I actually chopped up my onions beforehand. Now it's up to you on what shape you want to cut these in. I went for more of a long, thin slice. You can also dice them or however fancy it. Once the butter is fully melted, go ahead and toss in those onions, stirring occasionally until softened or about 10 minutes. Once you hit that point, go ahead and adjust the heat to a medium and add a bay leaf. Make sure to stir and scrape the bottom of the pot so it does not stick. 
You want to do this until the onions are a light golden and sticky. It says it should take about an hour and a half. It did not take that long for me. It took maybe about 20 to 30 minutes. It may have been because I didn't lower the heat quite to medium. It was more of a medium high. But either way, let's go ahead and continue cooking them until they look something like this. Once that's done, go ahead and adjust the heat to a medium low. Add a fourth cup of water and be sure to scrape the bottom of the pot to loosen any sticky parts or any brown bits from the bottom so it dissolves into the water. You wanna cook this for about 12 minutes or until it thickens. And then at that point, add another fourth cup of water. Now you're gonna to wanna to re repeat this process about two more times. So you've done it about total four times. Once that's all done, you're gonna go ahead and add thyme and flour and continue cooking and stirring constantly for about three minutes. Then you wanna go ahead and add your sherry into the pot, adjust the heat to a medium high and continue stirring and scraping the bottom of the pot consistently for about three minutes longer. At which you will go ahead and add the chicken and beef broth and one teaspoon of salt. I found that the chicken and beef broth had enough sodium, so I ended up regretting adding the extra salt. So I would recommend if you use low sodium chicken broth and beef broth, then go ahead and add the salt. If you're using just regular chicken broth or, and beef broth, then don't add the salt. And then go ahead and bring all of that to a simmer, stirring it occasionally. You're gonna wanna cook that for about 30 minutes. Once that's all said and done, you go ahead and remove the bay leaf, try it, See if you want to adjust it to your taste, your liking, maybe a little more salt, maybe a little more pepper. Uh, I actually chose to add a little bit more pepper, but it's really up to you. So this next part, I did a little different. According to the recipe, you should preheat the oven to 425 Fahrenheit with the rack in the middle. Arrange your baguette slices on the baking sheet and bake until lightly golden, about 10 minutes. And then you preheat the broiler uh, and carefully put the oven rack on the top about six inches from the top uh, and then rub the baguette with raw garlic cloves sprinkle pepper on it put your rare cheese on it uh, and then broil it until it's it's golden brown we didn't have baguette i actually had ciabatta bread so i sliced that put the rare cheese over it and then just popped it in the air fryer uh, toasted it for probably about six minutes or so or until it gets toasty and just use that instead both work. I felt like the the steps in the cookbook were needlessly complicated, but you can do it both ways. It's really your personal preference. Mine turned out just fine. I actually chose to add more cheese just grated on top of the soup, which I highly recommend. You can't go with enough cheese unless you're lactose tolerant and I guess you're suffering for it. But hey, we all have our crosses to bear, I guess. And now for Otix skillet fried spiced potatoes. Much like the bread for the onion soup, I actually took my own shortcuts in making this. Uh, the recipe called for cooking the onions and the potatoes in the skillet. I actually separated it. I added the butter to the skillet and sauteed the onions in it. And then I chopped up my potatoes to the bite size that I was looking for. Then I put them in the air fryer and sprayed them with a little bit of oil and fried them for about 10 minutes or until they were golden brown. Then I mixed them into the onions in the skillet and added the seasoning of salt, black pepper, paprika, cayenne, and garlic powder, and then mixed it all together. Once it had a nice even coating and it was a little bit more browned, I added the minced chives and then transferred it to a metal bowl for serving. And there you have it, the meal is complete. The roast was so tender, it actually was falling apart when I was trying to fish it out of the Dutch oven, um, but it was really moist, had a lovely flavor of the pear and the sparkling pear cider. The potatoes were great. They were crispy on the outside, but nice and fluffy on the inside. The soup was probably my favorite, but all in all, wonderful meal. I really recommend it. I have a lot of fun cooking, and this was a lot of fun filming, so I would like to do more of this in the future. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to leave a thumbs up, 
perhaps a comment down below which dish looked to be your favorite or you'd want to try the most or maybe some ideas for recipes future that I could try and make. But thank you for watching. Much appreciated. I'll see you in the next video.